What about the game, Duke? Was it any good? <laughs> Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're taking a look at 10 games that built up hype just to deflate us. Consider these a lesson in not letting marketing sway you so easily. And you have to grab those because they may never come again. Before we begin, we publish new videos all week long, so be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Evolve. Warning number one, when spotting an underwhelming product, pre-orders are put up before anything is ever shown. That is exactly what happened with Evolve when it was first announced. Publisher 2K put out ads for the game before it was ever fully revealed, before anyone had an idea on what this was. Surely this push for grabbing cash now means a great product later down the road, right? Well, maybe for the critics that gave it positive reviews at launch, Although what players found was a game that quickly got stale after a couple of hours. Those who stuck with it longer than that found even more flaws in the game's balance specifically. Either hunters brought down the monster within minutes or the monster had to sweat and make miraculous plays to win the game. Regardless, winning a game never felt good and it felt more like a sigh of relief. Even a push to free to play didn't save Evolve, and since then, developer Turtle Rock Studios has struggled regaining trust and interest from players. Dead Island In the history of video game trailers, Dead Island frequently comes up as one of the best. It paints a tragic story about a family going on vacation days before a zombie outbreak occurs. Yeah, and the game was also nothing about that. What we got from Dead Island was not a heartbreaking narrative-driven action game, but a mindless series of fetch quests with RPG and crafting mechanics. Oh, Todd left his six-pack at his hut, can you go grab that? Stephanie left her hair curler at the lighthouse, think you can swipe that before the zombies get you? Honestly, we're surprised this didn't cause developer Techland or publisher Deep Silver to close down. Had it been released in today's age, it most likely would have. <laughs> Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. You guys are making a girl miss solitary. <sighs> Still, sure is nice to be out of Arkham. We're not quite sure who was hyped for this game, but with the amount of marketing Warner Brothers Interactive was pushing with new trailers and behind the scenes videos, there was enough hype to get this on our list. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League does have bright spots here and there, but most of the time, prepare for absolute tediousness. Give me one reason why we should go out into that shit show. The mission structure is abysmal in how it is copy pasted for the entire campaign. The UI looks like an Excel spreadsheet vomited on our screens, and the way the Justice League goes out is severely underwhelming. At this point, we have to wonder if the effort in making Suicide Squad a thing in pop culture today is even worth the effort anymore. We are all losers. The shark's right. Mighty number nine. Hey, you, looking at the screen. Let me ask you a question. Do you like awesome things that are awesome? Following a mass exodus of developers from Japanese studios like Konami and Capcom, many were eager to see what was next for these creators. Koji Igarashi left Konami to make Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Shinji Mikami left Capcom to start up Platinum Games with former Capcom cohort Hideki Kamiya before leaving to go start Tango Gameworks. And what did famed Mega Man designer Kaiji Inafune leave Capcom to go do? Mighty Number no. 9, which looked stellar when we got early looks at concept art. We did get a Mega Man successor in the end, but it was nothing like we wanted. Explosions that looked like pepperoni pizzas, voice acting almost worse than Mega Man 8. <laughs> we at Cherry Dine are doing all we can to help fix the situation. And a series of marketing incidents that insulted those who backed the game caused it to become one of the biggest blunders of 2016. It even caused some to discuss whether spiritual successors were ever going to be a good idea. That's how bad this game was. But hey, it's better than nothing. Even if it's not perfect, it's better than nothing. At least that's my opinion. Duke Nukem Forever. He's so cool. Yeah, I thought he'd be taller. It's hard to believe anyone would be excited about Duke Nukem Forever, given it spent a decade and a half in development hell. We were glad to see the king return to his throne, but Forever was not what we had in mind for him. The gunplay felt archaic, the boss fights were boring, the jokes weren't funny. Power on. Now it's time to kick some ass. And the controls made Duke feel clunky to move around. 
In other words, it learned nothing from Duke Nukem 3D and decided to just follow the trends. Yes, Gearbox, because everyone wanted Duke to man a turret or play with an RC truck. That's exactly what we wanted in a Duke Nukem game. Ah, uh, sorry, Duke. Looks like they're shutting us down for the night. Aliens Colonial Marines. I'm feeling good, Captain. But I'm worried about 2-3. That's good, because I'm sending you in to catch up with Rhino 2-1. Speaking of Gearbox software, the company has never fully recovered from this train wreck of a game. Many were hyped because this was the studio behind Borderlands 2, making a game based on Alien. A reasonable excuse to get excited to be fair, but when the game came out, oof. Major oof. We never thought it was possible to turn the Xenomorphs into the least scariest thing ever made. It wasn't uncommon for one of them to glitch into the floor or other objects or even just run around in circles and run away from fights. And most of this was simply because the code had one typo. Fixing this typo would make the Xenomorphs behave as intended, but even then, the gunplay is garbage, the story is boring, and the visuals made it look like so many other games that were on the market at the time. And those games were better than this. They came out better. The day before. We've saved people from the outside before, but we practically pulled you back from the brink of death. We're not quite sure how developer Fantastic tricked so many people into thinking it was delivering a promising experience. An online extraction shooter with zombies? How many of those games do we have? Like, 700? 1,000? Hey Joe, you wanna play a zombie game? No, I don't wanna play another goddamn zombie game! Regardless, Many bought in, for whatever reason, and boy did they get what they paid for. After years of delays and possible plagiarism in marketing, Fantastic delivered a game that ran about as well as a paper shredder chewing through bottles of glue. Inconsistent frame rates, buggy character models, frequent pop-ins, a city with absolutely nothing to do in it, and it all chalked up to a game worse than anything that came out in 2023. The day before generated virtually nothing in revenue. Fantastic closed four days after the game launched, and the game was delisted without notice until after the fact. I don't usually believe in miracles. Anthem. Admit it. You needed me. You still need me. Need you. I don't need anyone. What was the big reason behind Anthem's hype? We have to wonder. It was first announced with nothing more than concept art and talks about how amazing the story was going to be. Whatever gameplay was shown was heavily fabricated with overt cinematic moments and unrealistic comps between players. And all the gaming press could talk about was how great the flying is. Super Mario 64 had flying way back in 1996. What did Anthem bring to the table 23 years later? Mundane shooting, land environments, a forgettable story, a painful grind to reach the end game, and for many, a game that bricked consoles and PCs. Worth it? I hope so. Patience is my middle name. You know, I'm not looking to replace you. Marvel's Avengers. Damn, I got a fight on my hands. Get the con, you got this. This should have been such a comically easy win for Square Enix. What you had was one of the biggest Japanese companies in gaming publishing a Marvel game. The money was there, and developer Crystal Dynamics was coming off the success of the Tomb Raider reboot. But Square Enix had to go and order their studio to make Marvel's Avengers a live service game littered with power levels, grinding for loot and experience, and a combat system that is nothing but constant button mashing as you wait for cooldowns on powers. And the more it was shown during marketing, the worse it looked. Sure enough, the skepticism became completely justified. No one wants to play a game where the Avengers are spending more time opening chests than they are fighting baddies. Square Enix would lose more than $60 million and would sell off Crystal Dynamics to Embracer Group in 2022, along with the Tomb Raider IP. Marvel's Avengers shut down in September 2023, and it will not be missed. Doesn't matter. <laughs> The Order, 1886. We'll come back and have another go later. Ah, finally, the first big release to show why we all bought PlayStation 4s in the first place, right? Right? Knack certainly wasn't cutting it, but The Order, 1886 looked so good, you guys. Right? Right? Well, what happens when you get people hyped over trailers that are mostly composed of cutscenes? You get the reception to The Order, 1886. 
So many folks were upset that their cutscene heavy shooter was only a few hours long and nothing more than shooting galleries and quick time events. And to make matters worse, the whole game ends just when things are about to get good. Kind of shows what you should expect when gameplay isn't shown off too much. That was a hard listen for many of us. Go on without me, I'll find another way through! Which hyped game do you feel soiled your experience the most? Did it make our list? You ready to play? I'm ready. Let us know down in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to Mojo Plays for more great videos every day.